The U.S. women's soccer team is now on their way back to the United States after yesterday's huge World Cup win. And the crowd did not just erupt in this victorious roar for them. They also started chanting for equal pay. Equal pay! Now that is a moment. The women's team sued, of course, the U.S. Soccer Federation for gender discrimination back in June, saying they should get the same pay as the men who play the same game. And yesterday they got what sounded like support for equal pay, to a degree, from an unlikely ally, President Trump. Listen to this. Do you believe female athletes should be paid as much as their male counterparts? President Trump, hard to hear there, saying he would look into it. The question asked, by the way, by our White House unit producer, Winston Wilde. The team's win was celebrating on social media, and Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, she invited them all to Capitol Hill. President Trump, of course, has not yet invited them to the White House after that feud with one of the team's captains, Megan Rapino. President Trump tweeted, I think a couple of weeks ago, that he would invite the team even if they lost. Rapino said she wasn't going to go to the White House at all. Some of her teammates have supported her. With us now is Kavitha Davidson, sports writer for The Athletic. Tarini and Jake are back with us as well. Uh, so, Kavitha, let me start with you. Talk through the numbers here, how much money the women get compared to the men, and how you see this playing out as it relates to this lawsuit and the championship, by the way, that the women can now come to and say, hey, look what we got. Well, yeah, I mean, the argument that's usually used against women getting equal pay in soccer is that the Women's World Cup does not generate as right. much revenue as the men's does, and that's absolutely true. But if you break it down to U.S. soccer, the U.S. women's national team actually generates it's about $20 million more revenue than the U.S. men's soccer team. Um, and that really comes down to a lawsuit against U.S. soccer, the U.S. Soccer Federation. So it's actually more difficult than when you want to break it down to broadcasting rights and television deals and sponsorship rights, because those are negotiated in conjunction with the men's teams as well. And obviously, if you look at Nike sales and if you look at the TV ratings, the women do outperform the men. So it's kind of a disingenuous argument that's used against them. Rapino was talking about the issue of equal pay just this morning. Here's what she had to say. I think it's just everybody's everybody's ready for it. Everybody wants it. Um, everybody's ready for the conversation. We moved um, to the next piece, and to have something like that, and you know, obviously in the biggest match um, that went so far beyond anything sport, um, was pretty incredible. Kavitha, from your perspective, how much does it help or not when the nation's most powerful politicians, people like Nancy Pelosi, for example, who invited these women to the cap to Capitol Hill, come out and say, yes, of course, these women should get equal pay? I mean, it helps incredibly, but I would like to see some actual action on that. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually just in London for the semi uh, that the U.S. played against England, and they have a minister of sport who has spoken very outspokenly about the need for equal pay, equal coverage, and equal really comes down to equal respect. And I think that it's really great to hear uh, politicians talk about this, but what are we actually going to do from a legislative standpoint to ensure that there is equal pay? I think also in terms of politicians actually talking about this, it'll be interesting to see how much uh, Democratic presidential candidates bring this up on the on the campaign trail. Equal pay is something that they've made a centerpiece of their campaigns. People like Senator Kamala Harris, Kristen Gillibrand. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how much they sort of latch on to this women's victory here and talk about this issue. Somebody else, we've been talking a lot about superstar women athletes, right? And I have some tough news to break to all you who are watching this show and not Wimbledon. 15-year-old tennis phenom Coco Goff has lost her Wimbledon match. She was playing this morning. She, of course, is the young woman who beat Venus Williams earlier in the tournament. She's been on this hot streak, came out for a comeback win over the last couple of days. Uh, we are thinking of her and rooting for her, even in this moment of what is sure to be uh, difficult emotions. But, Kavitha, it has me asking you this, right? In all Grand Slam tournaments, women got equal prize money. That's been happening since 2007 in tennis. Why is it taking soccer so much longer to get it together? 
Well, it's it's the common refrain, right? It's equal pay because for equal work. And a lot of people, a lot of the detractors are saying that the women don't do equal work. That's what they always said in tennis because the women play three sets instead of five. Um, and, and if you look at soccer, it really doesn't hold up, does it? Especially when you look at the U.S. breakdown. Globally, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a different issue. But the U.S. breakdown, I mean, the success that the women have had, the number of games that they play, and especially when you look at the performance bonuses, which is based on how far they get into tournaments, the women make 38% of performance bonuses that the men do. Um, it really, really doesn't hold up. But the reason that it's been taking so long is really just this kind of instilled idea that we undervalue women's sports, we undervalue the work that they do, so we consider the work that they do to not be equal. Kavitha Davidson, thank you so much for coming on and for your perspective and analysis on all of this. Thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Why don't you subscribe? It's really easy. Just click on that button down there. And for more news from MSNBC, click on any of these videos here for the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more videos from MSNBC with our newsletters. Head over to msnbc.com newsletters to sign up.